Where'd you meet Jack Kerouac? They asked him when we uh, walked into the place. Uh, the place, the favorite bar of the Hepcats around North Beach. Oh, I always meet my body softers in the street. Gary Snyder yelled, and then, on it be is. <laughs> oh, it was a great night. A stark night, in more ways than one. Well, he and, and some other poets were scheduled to give a poetry reading at the Sixth Gallery in town, and they were all meeting in the bar and getting high. But as they uh, stood, sat around, I saw that he was the only one who didn't look like a poet. <laughs> Though, ho, 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 poet he was indeed. The other poets were either horn-rimmed, intellectual hepcats with wild black hair, like Allen Ginsberg, or uh, delicate, pale, handsome poets, like Michael McClure, <laughs> in a suit, or out of this out of this world, gentile Italian Americans like Philip Lamantia, who uh, looked like a young priest, or bow tied, wild haired old anarchist fuds like Kenneth Rexroth, or uh, big fat, bespeckled, quiet boo boos like Philip Whalen, <laughs> and all the other hopeful poets were. Standing around in various costumes, uh, worn at the sleeve, corduroy jacket, scuffly shoes. But Gary Snyder was in rough workingman's clothes. He bought secondhand in Goodwill stores. He showed great sympathetic interest in me. <laughs> I, I, he claimed at once that I was a great bodied sattva, meaning a uh, great wise being or <laughs> great wise angel and that I was ornamenting this world with my sincerity. Ah, Gary's buddy, big old good-hearted Philip Whalen. 180 pounds of poet meat! Who is he? I asked. Oh, well, uh, he's my big best friend from up in Oregon. Oh, at first you think he's slow and uh, stupid, but, uh, oh, actually, he's a shining diamond. <laughs> You'll see. Well, anyway, I followed the whole gang of howling poets to the reading at the Sixth Gallery that night, which was, among other important things, the night of the birth of the San Francisco Poetry Renaissance. I mean, everybody was there. It was a mad night. And, uh, well, I was the one that got things jumping by going around collecting dimes and quarters from the rather stiff audience standing around in the gallery and coming back with three huge gallon jugs of California Burgundy. <sighs> and uh, getting them all piffed so that by 11 o'clock, when Allen Ginsberg was reading his poem, Howl, drunk with arms outspread, everybody yelling, Go! 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 Like a jam session. And old Kenneth Rexroth, the father of the Frisco, poetry scene was wiping his tears and gladness. Oh, and Gary himself read his fine poems about Coyote, God of the North American Plateau Indians. Fuck you, sang Coyote and ran away. <laughs> read Gary to the distinguished audience, making them all howl with joy. It was so pure. Uh, you know, uh, fuck being a dirty word that comes out clean. Oh, and then Gary showed his sudden barroom humor <laughs> with lines about coyote bringing goodies and as well anarchistic ideas uh, about how Americans don't know how to live <laughs> with lines about commuters being trapped in living rooms that come from poor trees felled by chainsaws. His voice was deep and resonant. Uh, something earnest, strong, humanly hopeful. <laughs> I like about him. Well, the other poets were either too dainty in their stethicism, or too hysterically cynical to hope for anything, or too abstract, or too political. 
Oh, meanwhile, scores of people stood around in the darkened gallery, uh, straining to hear every word of the amazing poetry reading. As I wandered from group to group, facing them, facing away from the stage, urging them to glug a slug from the jug. <laughs> oh, I wandered back and sat on the right side of the stage, giving out little wows and yeses of approval and Oh, even whole sentences of comment with nobody's invitation. But in the general gaiety, nobody's disapproval either. <laughs> mm. It was a great night. <sighs> ah, delicate Philip Lamantia. Red from a delicate onion skin, which he kept flipping carefully with long white fingers, the poems of his dead chum Hoffman, who had you know, eaten too much peyote and chihuahua, but read none of his own poems. A charming elegy in itself to the memory of the dead young poet. <laughs> and read them in an Englishly little voice that <laughs> had me crying with the inside laughter. Though uh, later, uh, I got to know Philip and liked him. Uh, among the people standing around in the gallery was Natalie Jackson, a girl with a short haircut, uh, red-haired, bony, uh, handsome, uh, a real good chick. <laughs> And, uh, well, a friend of everybody of any consequence around North Beach, uh, oh, it's a writer herself. It was bubbling over with excitement at the time, because she was in love with my old buddy Neil Cassidy. <laughs> Great! Hey, Natalie! I yelled, and she took a big slug from my jug and shined eyes at me. Neil just stood behind her with both arms around her waist. Oh, between poets, uh, Kenneth Rexroth would get up and make a little funny speech in his snide, funny voice and introduce the next reader. But, uh, as I say, come 11.30, when all the poems were read and everyone was milling around wondering what had happened and what would come next in American poetry, he was wiping his eyes with his handkerchief. Oh, and we all got together with him, the poets, drove in several cars to Chinatown for a big fabulous dinner off the Chinese menu with chopsticks, yelling conversation in the middle of the night in one of those free-swinging great Chinese restaurants of San Francisco. Oh, th this happened to be Gary's favorite Chinese restaurant, Sam Wo. And uh, he showed me how to order and how to eat with chopsticks. <laughs> and told anecdotes about the Zen lunatics of the Orient. <laughs> had me going so glad. <laughs> and we had a bottle of wine on the table. And, uh, finally, I, I went over to an old cook in the doorway of the kitchen and asked him, Why did Body Dharma come from the West? I don't care, said the old cook. I told Gary, and he said, Perfect answer. Absolutely perfect. Now you know what I mean by Zen. <laughs> <laughs>